Mind you, we've uh, been uh, recording today uh, on uh, various different guitars and amps and things. Can you just talk us through what we've been through today? Okay, well starting with the guitars, what we've recorded with is... We'll start with the amps actually. Mm. This is a 1962 original Vox AC30. It's got three channels, six inputs. We've been recording using the predominantly using the bright channel with occasional use of the um, vibrato channel um, so it's a 1960s valve amp original with the original limitations of a 1960s valve amp and we've been using some vintage guitars through it or vintage reissue guitars the first of which I'll just show is a Rickenbacker 325 which is similar model used by John Lennon and also uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival and a few others. Um, it's got the three quarter scale neck and single coil lipstick pickups which are the original vintage pickups from the 60s. So it's basically the same sort of sound you would have got out of a 1950s original 325, early 60s 325, using the 60s coupled with a, a vintage AC30. It's really a, a classic sort of early 60s vintage sound guitar and amp combination. So this particular guitar is actually a 1973 model but it's vintage in its own right and you know, it's, uh, the wood has mellowed over time so basically what you've got is a vintage instrument here. So that's the 325 we've been using. We, In terms of um, pickup settings we've, we've predominantly used it on the bridge pickup which is this one here. With the neck pickup you stick, slick the, slick the selector up to here you get a more bassy sound which in some ways is comparable to a Fender Strat in the um, intermediate position. But to get the classic Beatles 60s sound we've been using it on the bridge pickup. So that's the 325. Then moving on from the 325 the other guitar we've been using today is the sort of big brother of the 325, the 325 being a 1950s design guitar. Uh, the Rickenbacker 360 is really its big brother. It's a slight variation in shape compared to uh, the 325. Uh, the larger version of the 325, the direct comparison would be the 330. The 360 is a, a 1960s model which was improved ergonomically to make it easy to play so instead of having the pointy horns it's got a more rounded shape. Uh, again it, it's a classic instrument we've been using it through the the uh, 1962 Vox AC30 predominantly again using the bridge pickup for the trebly jangly sound that Rickenbackers are well known for. The main difference between these two Rickenbackers is that this particular guitar is fitted with the more modern high gain pickups which uh, are basically very similar to the lipsticks but they give improved volume and also there's just a bit of extra <coughs> excuse me a bit of extra tonal range so if you wanted to get into a more Gibson-y Gibson humbucker sound you've got that option with these which the lipsticks can't replicate. Um, other than that this is a 2004 guitar but it's a vintage reissue so in all other respects it's the same as a 1960s Rickenbacker 360. Um, the final guitar we've been using is a Fender <coughs> excuse me which is a, a Fender Jazzmaster. This is a 1957 design. The actual guitar is a 1980s model. It's one of the first ones made when Fender reintroduced the Jazzmaster. It has however been refurbished and when I had this done in the uh, early 90s when I was playing professionally with a band and I used it on tour uh, I had a few little extra bits done to it so the pickups are actually off a 1967 guitar. Um, so it's an 80s guitar in terms of the wood but the electrics and bits and pieces on it are actually much older. At the time they were very cheap to purchase, so <laughs> it's probably worth more than the guitar now, but anyway, that's what it is. Um, the Jazzmaster, designed in 1957, designed to be Fender's top of the range of guitar, <coughs> took 
two uh, channels, if you like, on this. Treble, oh, sorry, treble and lead, or pick it up and you have a, a what was designed to be a rhythm channel, which is more bassy. So the idea being that it's designed as a jazz instrument, so jazz players trimming away, playing rhythm, click the switch down, and you get a more trebly sound. The sound we've been using, as you'll see on the samples, is the lead sound, so it's the more trebly sound, which in the bridge position is quite comparable to a Rickenbacker. I happen to like trebly Rickenbacker type sounds. So to give a bit of differentiation in the sound, we've used it on the middle setting, which is picking up both the um, the bridge and the neck pickup, and it's a more uh, fendery sound comparable to perhaps a Stratocaster or maybe a Telecaster, as opposed to a distinctive Jazzmaster sound which you'd get off the bridge or the neck pickup. Um, th this is a full scale neck, similar to the um, the Rickenback if you like. So you, it's uh, you've got longer sense there of strings to play so it's 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 basically a standard size guitar I can't remember if I mentioned that the 325 was a three quarter size guitar so that's just um, just for reference really and um, we've <coughs> been playing this also through the Vox AC30 so again a 1960s pickup played through uh, a vintage 1960s amp uh, shall I go on the bass? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've covered it on the guitars. Yeah, that's all on the guitars. I know there's a it's quite a, a quite a big bass unit there, so so Right, the um moving on to the bass, this is a nineteen sixty seven uh Vox Super Foundation. The Super Foundation was introduced as an improvement over the uh, original transistor bass that Vox introduced in the mid sixties, which was the T sixty. T sixty was known to blow up regularly. So all the circuitry was improved and enlarged, and this is increased power. This is, um, I think it's 200 watts actually, but it's a 1960, original 1967 amp, but it's transistor as opposed to valve, which um, the AC30 is a valve amp. This solely relies on transistors. <coughs> so all the, um, the sounds on it are basically produced by transistors, no valves at all. Uh, this was one of the earliest Vox amps to have various different effects on it. There are various nice 1960s effects on it. Um, today we've just been using it on the bass channel with, funnily enough, a Rickenbacker bass. Uh, this is a Rickenbacker 4003 bass, which I've nearly put through the ceiling again. It's a 1980s model. Uh, there's not a lot of difference between this and the 1960s version, which was a Rickenbacker 4001. Uh, the improvements were made to the neck. It's basically been made to be stronger than the uh, the neck on the 4001, but the pickups very similar. You've got a high gain at the neck and the standard bass pickup here. We've been using it on the uh, intermediate position, picking up all the pickups to get that trebly, twangy rick and macker sound. And we've been using it through the bass amp on the bass that's um, quite a low setting in terms of volume with the bass tone halfway from the very deep bass to the very sort of trebly twangy bass to get a nice sort of intermediate sound. So uh, the bass sound is that of a Rickenbacker which quite indistinguishable really from a 1960s model played for a 1960s genuine vintage amp. And um, the cabinet in this instance is a 300 watt 2x15 Vox cabinet which um, a again, it's it's got new speakers in it, but it's to a 1960s original design, so it's the sound you would have got from the amp and cabinet combination when the cabinet was new. If that makes sense. I think that's basically it. Nigel, I'd like to thank you very much for doing all the work today, and thanks for the info. Thank you. Cheers.